Now, in B part 1, we're asked to prove the identity cos 2x plus pi upon 3 plus the cos of 2x minus pi upon 3 is identical to cos 2x. And if we do this, it's worth 3 marks. OK, so we start off with the proof. So I'm going to write that in as the proof. And I'm going to take the left-hand side. And because it's quite a long expression, I'm just going to write LHS for short. So I'm going to take the left-hand side, LHS, and write down what it's identical to. Now, the left-hand side consists of two terms, and I'm going to use the expansion of the cos of a plus b on the first term and the expansion of cos of a minus b on the second term where a is going to be the 2x and b will be the pi upon 3. And hopefully you know your identities, the expansion of the cos of a plus b. You should know that it's cos a cos b minus sine a sine b. And when we get to the cos of a minus b, it's going to be cos a cos b plus sine a sine b. OK, so I'm going to expand that then. So first of all, we have the cos of 2x, cos of the b part, pi upon 3. I'll put that in brackets, pi upon 3. Then it's minus sine of 2x, then the sine of pi upon 3. Okay, so that's the first term expanded. Now we move on to the second term, and if we expand that using the cos of a minus b expansion, we'd have cos of 2x, then the cos of pi upon 3, then it will be plus the sine of 2x, sine of pi upon 3. OK. Now what I notice is that uh, this second term, minus sine 2x, sine pi upon 3, is exactly the same as the last term here, so they're going to cancel. So I just do that through there. and. All it's left to do is just to simplify each of the remaining two terms. Now each of them has got the cos of pi upon 3, and the cos of pi upon 3 is basically 60 degrees when we convert it to degrees. So the cos of 60 degrees, we should know, is a half. So cos of 2x times a half plus another cos 2x times a half, we're going to have essentially two lots of a half cos 2x. OK? And quite clearly the twos here cancel. Two lots of a half is just one. So I'm going to get what I'm meant to prove on the right-hand side, and that is the cos of 2x. So I've got that the left-hand side is identical to the right-hand side. And so that's proved. OK, moving on to B part 2. We are given that y equals 3 sine squared x plus cos 2x plus pi upon 3 plus cos of 2x minus pi upon 3 and we're asked to show that dy dx equals sine 2x. And if we're able to show that dy dx equals sine 2x, we get 4 marks. So how do we do it? Well, let's just give ourselves a bit of room here. So we'll, we'll go up to there. That should do. OK, so therefore, well, what I notice is that this is in the same part anyway as part 1, so it would seem to suggest that uh, part 1 is going to be uh, used in some way. Now when I look closely, I notice that uh, we had to prove that uh, these last two terms 
were identical to cos 2x. So I'm sure we better use that. So I'm going to write that in as y equals the first term, 3 sine squared x, and write this last, this last pair of terms as cos 2x. So put that in like so. OK, so ready to uh, differentiate now. So we have that, therefore, dy by dx equals. Now, the first term, when we differentiate this, I'm going to use the chain rule. And uh, just to recap on the chain rule, let's just do it in the margin. OK. Chain rule is essentially that if I've got, say, y equals some function of x, dy dx, <coughs> excuse me, dy dx is going to equal dy by dt, where we have t as some function, times dt by dx. OK, so coming back over to here, I'm going to think of this as 3 times sine x all squared. So if I let sine x be t, then this will say 3t squared. And doing or differentiating dy with respect to t, differentiating 3t squared is going to be 6t. So that will be 6t. But instead of writing t, t, remember, was sine x. So I'm going to write that as sine x. And then we have to differentiate what we nominated t to be with respect to x. Now, t was sine x. And so differential of sine x is cos x. So that gives us 6 sine x cos x. Again, moving on to differentiating cos 2x, I'm going to let the 2x be t. So I have cos of t. So differentiating cos of t is sine t. So I beg your pardon, minus sine t. So that's minus sine of t. And t was 2x, so that's 2x. And then I need to differentiate with respect to x what I called t. And t was 2x, so differentiating that respect to x gives me 2. OK, so let's tidy this up. We have 6 sine x cos x as the first term. Write that back in. And then minus 2 sine 2x. Now I've got to get dy dx to equal sine 2x. And at the moment, the last term seems to be in that form with the sine 2x, but the first term doesn't. But then we should know that this is very similar to the sine of 2a. Let me just write it in the side here. Sine of 2a, do you remember? Sine of 2a, that's equal to 2 sine a cos a. So what I can do is split this first term as 3 times 2 sine x cos x. In other words, 3 times sine of 2x. Then I've got the last term here, minus 2 sine x, sine 2x, I should say. And that's going to now be 3 sine 2x. Take away 2 sine 2x. Gives us our answer, sine 2x. And that brings us to the end of question 8. So hopefully you got that one. And if you did, that's four marks.